Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee for meteorologistjoechaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, and nycweathernow.com, and of course, ssstormchasers.com for uh, when those storms are around. Uh, those guys do a great job uh, chasing and uh, taking uh, some great pictures and video. So just remember that the next time uh, we get a storm threat, and eventually we will. Uh, I thought this morning, because we really have a little bit of downtime now uh, for the next several days with the weather being the way it is, it just kind of look at the sort of gentle nature of the pattern that's setting up. And uh, I just want to show you what we have first initially. So we have this uh, upper air trough that went through uh, this morning. We had a cold front come through here yesterday evening. Uh, we've got low pressure sitting off the coast of the Pacific Northwest. We've got a big upper high that's cut off over Alaska. Here is another ridge that's building up in the Atlantic over Greenland. And in the midst of all of this, you still have good old Hurricane Nicole right out here, moving away uh, to the uh, east-northeast. Now, there really isn't too much um, happening with respect to weather across the United States, because if you look at the flow, and I want you to try to sort of visualize the fact that I've used this analogy when you look at the jet stream in the upper air, the uh, atmosphere, it, it really functions almost like a set of gears. If you think to the old uh, child's toy uh, of uh, putting, you know, they put the gears in the box and they have handles, and then when they got all the gears in, they turn one handle and all the wheels turn. Well, that's kind of how the atmosphere works. The only difference is that these gears that you see are constantly uh, changing in size, uh, in, in strength, uh, in, in position, in magnitude, and we're just trying to sort of orchestrate where all this is, goes in the future. So when we roll through the jet stream, a couple of things come to mind. First off, if you look in the east as we go into next week, uh, we've got those gears changing around basically a westerly flow coming out of the pacific that goes across the northern part of the united states and then pushes eastward actually this hour should be more like this but um we also have a big ridge of high pressure but it's a narrow ridge that builds across uh, the gulf states from texas right over to the carolinas and then underneath that we have this upper air low that's sitting in the eastern uh, Gulf of Mexico and extends out into the Bahamas. One of the things that results out of this is the fact that you're going to have rather low pressures across the tropics. So I think that there's a possibility, and we mentioned I mentioned this yesterday, that we could see some sort of tropical development later next week. And models kind of take that in a few different directions overnight. But you can see what happens with this ridge. It wound, I'll, I'll just back it up a second. So there it is across the Gulf states, and it migrates off the east coast. It's going to mean for uh, uh, three days next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, with above normal temperatures before we get a front to slide through. And then energy coming in from the Pacific, and you can kind of pick it out right over the, over here uh, at this point. Uh, it's right there. Energy's coming in from the Pacific. You've got this low now that moves into the Gulf of Alaska. You've got a trough that extends down from uh, eastern Greenland into the Atlantic. And here's your upper high, and here's your lower pressures that uh, or down in the tropics in a very broad sense. And there's that upper high. So, you know, the flow here is west-southwest. You get three days with above normal temperatures with that. And then uh, that trough in the Pacific swings around and actually makes for a imp fairly impressive system that moves across the southern states at this point. We're into uh, next weekend now. Now, the question is, whether there's any going to be any kind of tropical development out of this. And I'm just going to show you a couple of options. Uh, and I don't necessarily believe any of them or all of them, okay? Um, the GFS, actually, both the European and GFS attempt to spin up lows uh, either in the eastern Gulf right there or uh, off into the Bahamas and right here. The GFS doesn't really develop them very much, just kind of gets it all involved in this non-tropical system and lifts the moisture up northeast, and we wind up with a, uh, a couple of days of rain, much needed, uh, and that would be fine. I'm going to switch you to the European, show you that model's option, because all models provide options. And uh, you know what? We'll get a little closer because I think it'll be a little more useful. Um, but... 
let's back it up. And, you know, the European has the same idea in that it starts to develop low pressure later next week. And you can just pick it out right in there. And then it just sort of sits in the Bahamas, migrates. Part of it goes into the Gulf of Mexico. Part of it moves, part of it goes into the Gulf of Mexico, part of it to the s southeast. And then you have a non-tropical low on a weather front that's in the in the, along the Appalachians. And then it kind of rides all of this north northeastward up the coast as this upper trough goes by. And then, of course, we have the lovely Canadian, which, you know, I after seeing some of the things that the Canadian is, model has done over the last few days, I think it really can't top itself. So uh, I was wrong. Uh, the Canadian spins up not one, but two tropical systems. Uh, one, that it moves up the coast late next week. Okay, so basically a week from today, it has a hurricane moving up the coast, and then it has a second system in the Bahamas following it that moves up the coast to, uh, over the uh, over next week. And so it basically shows two tropical storms in three days. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm amazed. This model loves to spin up stuff, and it, it, it seems to spin up every cloud. And by the way, on the notion of the idea of two tropical storms in, in three days, Actually, it did happen in 1955 on the East Coast. You had Hurricane Connie, and this was in the month of August, by the way. Hurricane Connie, which four days later was followed by Hurricane Diane. Uh, both systems uh, coming up the East Coast uh, had huge impact on um, the East uh, with uh, record rainfalls, flooding, uh, you know, damage, et cetera, et cetera. So is it... Uh, not is it impossible that you could have two tropical systems three days apart? No, it's not impossible because it has happened before. Does it happen often? No, it's very rare to see that happen, extremely rare. Since if I have to pull up a case back from the 1950s in order to prove it, that's a, um, a rare instance indeed. Okay, so you know what? Have a great weekend. Fall foliage is the story this weekend, by the way, and if you're interested, uh, the moderate peak is you just go into northern New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, and up in the Hudson Valley, and you don't have to go far to find high color and peak color uh, this weekend. So enjoy it. Weather's perfect for it, and we will keep you updated on all the developments uh, on the websites, uh, and we'll be, of course, checking out the tropics. And I don't think we're done with the tropical season just yet. So have a great day and a great weekend.